Hey everyone and welcome to this Risky Biz product demo. My name's Patrick Gray and uh, these product demos are a way for our sponsors to show you all what it is that they're actually uh, designing and selling. And uh, today we're joined by Justin Kohler, uh, who is the VP of product uh, for Bloodhound Enterprise, which is a product made by the uh, security consulting firm SpectreOps. It has a long and storied history as an open source tool. Uh, and of course, now there's an enterprise version, which is what Justin's going to be walking us through uh, today. Uh, we are also joined by Adam Boileau, who is the Risky Business uh, podcast co-host. And the reason I asked Adam to, to join us today, because uh, normally these demos are just done by uh, yours truly, the reason I asked uh, Adam along today is that he is a Bloodhound appreciator. Uh, he is a Bloodhound user from way back and I just thought, um, you know, it make, makes sense for him to, to hang about and uh, ask any questions that popped into his head as, um, as someone who's been a user of the technology. So Justin, hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Adam, thanks for joining us uh, on this one, mate. Yeah, hi there. It's going to be fun. All right. So, Justin, um, why don't we start, I guess, just with a little bit of background and yeah. perhaps you could explain to people, because look, anyone who's worked in offensive security, uh, and I mean like anyone who's worked in offensive security for the last decade, they know what Bloodhound is, but cybersecurity is bigger than offensive security, yes. right? So there's yep. going to be plenty of people out there who don't know what it is. Um, why don't you kick off by uh, explaining it? Yeah, so let's go back from like eight years ago. Um, the SpectreOps released an open source tool called Bloodhound. And, and you can think of it like Google Maps for Active Directory. So we knew that we could abuse ourselves, uh, or, our, or not abuse ourselves, or abuse our way to <laughs> domain admin, um, or, or take over the environment by taking advantage of privileges and user behaviors within Active Directory. But we were guessing our way there. So Bloodhound just made a map that we could reliably execute and you know execute our objective and outbrief our client. We did that for years. Um, and like you said, anybody on the offensive side knows this. And, and a lot of people on the defensive side started seeing the output, right? And these maps of how you could abuse your way to, you know, domain admin or take over the environment. And for years, people wanted to know like, well, okay, how can I do this proactively on the defensive side? So that's why we built Bloodhound Enterprise. It took us a considerable amount of time to see, uh, you know, to kind of try to determine how we would do this well and at scale. So Bloodhound Enterprise is a SaaS delivered uh, enterprise like global scale uh, solution to manage your Active Directory uh, Azure uh, identity attack path risk. Um, so that's across any number of domains, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of users. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can take the scale and you can kind of see it all at a glance. Um, it also is super easy to deploy and super fast. So for those enterprise clients, you can get like if you're under at 50,000 endpoints, we're going to get deployed and show you this visual within 30 minutes. I mean, it's super, super yeah. fast. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a high impact activity, right? Because yeah. it's something that I think people didn't kind of address this risk because before the tooling existed, it was just too labor intensive, uh, too, too hard. Right, you like you wouldn't it. even you, think about no, trying to can't. trying to really do this. Yeah, absolutely. You can't you can't see it. I mean, it's it's not possible with an ADUC, and you know, even when using like lower level uh, like SDDL parsers and all that stuff, like you still can't see it. It's it's almost. Uh, it, I like to say, um, it's particularly for users that are seeing their environments and in this for the first time, like this isn't your fault. Like you guys didn't put this <laughs> in by design. Like there are a lot of configurations yeah. uh, to account for. And so we just- Well, the way, the, way, the way people talk about their bloodhound scans now is very much like the way people used to talk about doing their first Nessus scan like yes. 15 years ago, you know, like you'd go into yes. an org, you unleash a Vuln scanner and the results come in and you say, oh my God, exactly. which is funny because we kind of went away from that for a while. And now probably if you were to do a Vuln scan of a whole organization, if you were even able to do that, you would have the oh my God moment again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that very much is the thing that this is an issue, you know, just, just too many attack paths through Active Directory and the way, you know, your users are, are, are sort of privileged. You know, this is, it's a, it's a problem for pretty much everyone. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and the numbers are get really bad really fast. So, like, if you yeah. have uh, thousands or or even you know tens of thousands, you're looking at like upwards of millions to a hundred million potential you know attack paths. And so, how do you make sense of that? It's just like an impossible problem. So that's why why we delivered Bloodhound Enterprise. Um, so the just kind before of the, we continue, I, I'd just ask you, Justin, maybe for yeah. the people who aren't you know completely au fait with the yeah. intricate details of Active Directory, if you could explain just what an attack path is. 
Yeah. So um, uh, think about it like an, an, an individual configuration. Uh, let me let me show you an example. So let's say like an individual configuration might be this. Let's start with the most. This is an individual configuration. This is a Windows 10 machine where authenticated users has the is in the administra administrators group of that machine. So authenticated users is a very large group in Active Directory, and they've been giving admin rights over that machine. Now that that alone, you know, you can kind of see what that does. It allows all of these people ha to have admin access on that machine, right? So through group nesting, we pull out all of those uh, relationships and just show you the effective rights of who has admin rights on that machine. Now, it, why do I care, right? So this is why you care. So if we were, oops, I got that backwards, domain admins, domain users. So let's go from the lowest privileged user in a environment to the highest privilege, and you can see that admin two, right, is right there. So you can break an attack path in multiple locations, right? And, and we do, we suggest people um, based on the attack path that they take different ways of remediating it. But this is an example, like why do you care? Because these privileges add up and connect things. Think of them as roads connecting cities that allows me to go from LA to New York or you know anywhere across like a larger scale than what looks like is possible when you just look at it at this scale. Does that yeah. answer your question? Yes, it does. All right, so... Let's talk a bit. I guess the next step would be to talk a bit about Bloodhound Enterprise, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, that was an example of a single attack path. Now, let's think of like about it from the perspective of an enterprise with multiple domains, maybe some Azure tenants, uh, and they're trying to figure out like where do they prioritize uh, resources effectively. So, we do all of our attack path analysis from the perspective of tier zero. So, instead of just looking at like every attack path possible through the environment, we really want to focus on the ones that threaten the most critical assets in the environment. Again, those are tier zero or privileged access, uh, privilege, yeah, privilege access um, assets. And those are, we pull out a lot of those by default. So you'll see like there's a, a domain controller in this example. Uh, there's the domain hot head object itself. There's the groups that we want to protect, the members of those groups. This is a really small t test domain, by the way, and we'll grow this in scale as we continue. So we pull out all the nested members of these groups. We also uh, look for any group policy object that applies to those tier zero principles, because that's a really common uh, overlooked thing. So um, I'm gonna take a brief detour and explain what I mean here. So let's say I protect my domain controllers, right? But then there's this, uh, there's this group policy object that actually applies to multiple tier zero principles. So the threat here is uh, I might not be a domain admin myself, but if I can eventually find a way to this group policy object, then I can push a malicious change to that domain controller and then take it over that way. So we want to tag those group policy objects that apply to any members of tier zero as tier zero themselves. So that represents our initial scope of things that we want to protect above all else. We also give the uh, customer the ability to configure this for their environment. So you can see that we have, we can edit our tier zero membership here down or down here. Uh, so examples of this, like um, our PKI or Active Directory Certificate Services, uh, our ADFS, so if people are running Active Directory Federation Services, Privilege Access Management, right? If those vaults are holding the uh, credentials for all of my tier zero principles, then I want to protect that as well, and so on and so forth. Forth. But it's important that we want to understand the scope of it from the customer's perspective. Well, we've seen a lot of abuse around stuff like ADFS as well, right? Yeah. So, I, like a lot. I mean, when you said uh, if you're yeah. running ADFS, like I, I actually winced. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, I, I actually think that, you know, people thankfully have... And people think of the stereotypical things like uh, domain controllers, domain admins in an in a active directory environment. They don't think about the other gotchas, right? So like if you deploy Azure Sync, Azure Sync runs on a computer that's just created within the domain. Now, it, where is it created within your domain? Under what OU? What inherited rights are applied to that server? This is a server that you should think of as sensitive as a domain controller because it's syncing all of the accounts, right? Yes. Um, and well, people don't. No, I mean, it's just, no, it, it, <laughs> and, but attackers it's, honestly, do. it's just a, <laughs> attackers do. That's right, Adam. Yes. It's, yeah. Attackers do. Right. And we find these kind of the, the needles that, that allow us to pass through, um, some of the mitigations that may have been thought of previously. So, yeah. um, 
So now that we got our scope for tier zero set properly, I'm going to want to uh, action the most uh, you know, critical attack path. And, and we try to designate that by the exposure and the, and the risk score here. So what do I mean by exposure? So the way that we're categorizing any attack path in the environment uh, is by calculating the percentage of users and computers that have the ability to get to and abuse that path. There's a really important distinction. So like what is high in this environment may be low for a different customer. Um, it, it all depends on the connectedness of their directory, if that makes any sense. So like if, uh, if John has forced change password over a domain admin, but John is a user who hasn't logged in in a year, no longer exists, and nobody has write over John's account, then I would say f fix this issue first. Does that make sense? Yeah, We're I mean, it's, it's sort of like a, a, <laughs> the image that's coming to mind. Uh, and this is how much of a tragic I am. You remember that, that basically like 90s stoner meme? You know, this is like a pre-internet meme of the spider doing different webs based on what drug you fed it. You know, spider web on <laughs> yeah. caffeine, yeah. Yeah. spider but, web on marijuana, right? Yeah. Like this is kind of what I, Active Directory network graphs look like because yeah. they're all different. You know, one oh, can yeah. be the spider on caffeine, one can be the spider on <laughs> cocaine, you know? Yeah, and we want it, like there's so many different, again, there's the amount of configurations that exist in Active Directory and the amount of things that we've been told in the past are issues are just numerous, right? Like pages and pages and thousands of recommendations. We really wanted to try to focus on it on the most impactful things that you can do to remove the, remove the risk from our perspective, you know, again, former attackers. So um, that's how we assign the risk rating. So this is a high because 93% of the environment has the ability to get to and use this login session. So uh, this login is, you know, a login from a privileged uh, member, like a domain admin, who's in a lower privilege system. So the stereotypical is like domain admin logs into their machine to like surf the web. That's really bad, right? Um, <laughs> we know of a multiple ways that that can be abused. You can steal the credential, you know, the most, that's probably the most well-known, like uh, Mimikatz to carve the credential out of memory. But it's important to note that, and I, I feel like we have to explain this a lot, we don't need the password to abuse this. So you can abuse the token, you can inject into a process. At that point, I don't care about your privilege access management solution, right? Like it, I've already moved on. Um, so it's really important to kind of educate, uh, and that's why we try to get pretty verbose in here. Uh, we can also see the principles that were involved. This was kind of my scenario from earlier when you're asking me about an attack path. We can see the the individual configurations that led to that finding. So here, that administrator account has a session on this Windows 10 machine. I can find a whole bunch of information on that administrator account, including like the members, like the the other groups memberships that that thing has. Uh, maybe some more information on the abuse. So like, how does somebody abuse this? You know, I'm trying to educate myself and like, uh, we want to, um, we are as used on the security side as we are on the IT and admin sides so where we feel like we're educating a lot on those IT side about these abuses. Cause again, you said they were a new class of things, uh, compared to vulnerabilities, right? Hmm. Um, so that's great. Like I have all this background information and detailed, like, uh, uh configuration information about active directory, but I want to, I want to remove it. So. And here we go step by step here. This is involving the use of a group policy to prevent logins uh, on, you know, lower privileged, ac um, lower privileged assets. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, we want to try to go as verbose as possible, including like showing you where to click an ADUC to remove things. We don't want to leave anything to chance and, you know, um, Active Directory admins, you, you could be extremely good in one portion of Active Directory, but given the complexity, you might not know something that maybe others think is basic. So we just want to take away those uh, those questions from the start. So this this seems like, you know, it's quite a lot of detail in here. Are, are you targeting people who have significant experience with Active Directory? Or if this is, a, I mean, I've used it as a consultant before and trying to explain this stuff to the people who look after AD can be quite difficult like is the intent that this is a tool for domain admins or can other people you know use this to provide guidance to them that's a good question so our our typical user is uh is very similar to that vulnerability management like workflow right so uh somebody in charged of like understanding 
um, exposure across the company. Now, you know, the vulnerability management was how we were doing it uh, for years and years and years. Now there's attack surface management and all these different, people call it posture management. There's all these like different words. That's like our main, where we fit uh, long term. But we usually get brought in by the red team because they know this risk exists, right? Or, or somebody's just gone through a penetration test and, and they're like, well, I want to do better at this. And, and they know that like the penetration tester will recommend that we do something. But like the reason we put so much detail here is the people responsible for affecting this change are, you know, the Active Directory admins for most of these. I mean, some of them could be workstation admins, but we want to give as much detail as possible because we feel like that's what security was lacking in the past is security would say that here's a finding and you should fix it, AD team, but then not give the steps to fix it. And so, so found... I, I've, I'm going to I'm going to jump in there with a question, right? Because I'm wondering how often it is, and it makes total sense that you know the the sort of from a management point of view, it's sort of similar to Vuln Vuln scanning, where mm -hmm. you've got someone who knows the tool, someone who understands the security element of it, and then they take the output and try to get other people to action it. Correct. But I'm guessing quite often what that's going to mean. And, and why you've got this detail is that the security people who are running this tool can literally just copy and paste this, this detail into an email. Is that typically how it goes? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, email, ticketing system. You well, yeah, it. or Jira yes, or whatever, uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, uh, to the point that when we were first doing our first beta customers for a large, like, Fortune 50 uh, customer, you know, they have a massive active directory environment. There's all sorts of work that the Active Directory administrative team has to do. And so how do you cut through that and say, this is truly an issue, which is why we did the exposure scores. And then uh, let's cut through any potential, <laughs> that's that FaceTime feature of thumbs up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but then how do you cut through the, well, uh, be more specific. How would you go about addressing this change? Not just fix it but like show well and also show. and also the rationale because yes. until people have actually read the rationale they're like ah it's just security yeah. people hyperventilating you know, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and getting and, active directory admins and people who look after these things to understand the significance Yes. of the environment they look after and what it means and how easy it is for attackers to kind of like flow like water downhill through their environment when they start to see it and you know you've got an opportunity to upskill here that's you know having that kind of stuff written for you and available in such detail, like as a you know previous red teamer who has to write reports, like this is a, a beautiful and wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that that we've heard from AD teams too is, um, you know, and I think we were guilty of it years ago. Is is assuming that you can just rip out these configurations and nothing bad will happen. Well, that doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen, right? Yes. Like <laughs> you change privileges in Active Directory, and and, and AD admins will rightfully say. You, I'm going to fix this, but I am going to cause an incident fixing it, right? So, so we try to give that level of detail to say that we understand and here's the things that you would have to check to make sure that you're going to do this safely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, so you can it, guide them, you can actually guide them through, like, so they're not just taking a sledgehammer to it and hoping for the best. You no. can actually guide them through the steps that they need to. Correct, correct. There's yeah. some issues that uh, I, I know that we've helped customers uh, navigate through in the past that they've said they were previously unfixable problems that they've had to deal with for 10 years because they couldn't figure out how to find the source of a, uh, an account that was being used to log in everywhere. And they, they just never could pinpoint it. So we gave them the logging instructions to, to capture that activity and then they fixed it. So like, yeah. that, we're trying to get down to that detail to say like, don't just fix it, but here's how, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so. yeah no, 100%. Um, so we were right, anyway, sorry, back to the demo. <laughs> totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. So these all, all these, uh, you know, attack paths add up to kind of an exposure score across the domain and, and, or across other environments. I'll dip into Azure here in a second, but let me pivot over to posture. So all, it's always like the exec from the executive's perspective, you know, what are we doing here or what's the benefit of this? You know, how are we changing over time? Um, so this is where we capture our changes. So we can go back in time, three, six months, it, look at a specific uh, time period and report on the activity. Now, this is a demo environment. We don't really f uh, fix a lot here, so it's always bad. But in a real environment, you're seeing those positive remediation changes um, across the environment or multiple environments. So you can really communicate like the impact of your changes. So we reduced, you know, we cut this attack path and we reduced this attack path, which removed 30% of our domain, the ability to take it over, if that makes any sense. Well, and the nice thing is too, you're not just seeing when things are getting worse. 
uh, yes. sorry, you're not just seeing when things are getting better, you're also seeing when things are getting worse. And I believe Absolutely. you've got some instrumentation there so that you can even yeah. pump that out as a seam alert when someone does something insane yes. uh, in Active Directory. It says, whoop, whoop, hang on, this... <laughs> go go yeah. hit that admin on the on the nose with a rolled up newspaper basically yeah that, that's the in, in the like i think in ministry, like uh the admins really appreciate the the kind of continuous like near real time notification of that because they're putting in configuration changes they don't really and again we've already stated that it's impossible for them to understand the full effect of that when you chain it up so uh having something say hey that grew our risk by 40%, let's say, let's figure out a different way of putting that configuration. They're way more open to that than that configuration buries for a year. And then it's get discovered on a pen test for, uh, you know, sometime later, and it gets all really difficult and business process and politics to remove. So it's, yeah. yeah, that, that continuous validation is really helpful for, um, removing those things from festering nipping at nipping stuff in the bud exactly I think is what we're really exactly. talking about yeah and really also helping people get better at their craft because i mean yeah. all of the 80 teams that i've ever worked with once you got past that initial a pen yeah. test as an adversarial kind of thing once you started working with them generally they were very keen to learn how the attackers work because they Absolutely. don't see a lot of attackers so a way that lets them skill up and learn stuff mostly they're, they're pretty into it once they've got a great way to visualize it and see it and see that progress, which that's got to be a big, you know, a big deal for your, for your customers. Yeah. I, you know, initially again, we kind of get introduced as the people that are identifying all the issues in active directory, but once they understand that, Hey, this isn't your fault and this is a tool to help you get better. Then they're like, Oh wait, hold on. You can visualize group policy. Like, like they get really excited about yeah. how, how easy this makes it. Right. Um, uh, let's look at Azure. It's, on literally yep. most of the same. So this is a more complex Azure environment with a lot more issues. Um, but I'm just going to explain one thing here. So this is a an, another example attack path, uh, which this is grossly uh, <laughs> misconfigured. So uh, bear with me here for a second. But what I really wanted to show on the Azure side is the verbosity of the imagery that we put in the documentation. Um, we do this almost out of necessity because Azure changes all the time so you can learn it one week and then the next week you got to feel like you got to learn it again so it's the same process instead of you know protecting tier zero we're protecting the privileged access tier it is the exact same process and functionality we're just pulling out all of those relationships that will allow you to take over a tenant instead of a domain i mean i i gotta say like i i wondered when we first started doing stuff like Risky Business and, and Spectre Ops uh, Bloodhound Enterprise, I was like, geez, how are they going to manage the pivot? You know, like everyone's moving to the cloud. Surely this tech has a shelf life. And man, this week, so we are recording this the week that Microsoft announced that attackers managed to password spray themselves, Rus Russian state-backed attackers managed to password spray themselves into getting access to an account in a test tenant that they somehow pivoted, turned into access of like the security teams and like senior executives' email inboxes, which is exactly the type of attack, you know, exactly the type of chaining and, and uh, attack path uh, stuff that we're talking about with, with Spectrop. So it's, it's, it's absolutely something, you know, it's a type of misconfiguration that can exist with cloud accounts as well. I mean, there's some absolutely. stuff... Yeah, there's some stuff that that is not going to be quite the same, not going to be as disastrous as old school AD, but there's still dragons in, oh, in Azure yeah. AD. You know? Oh, yeah, a absolutely. And there's different dragons. There's not the same dragons. Yeah. We've learned some lessons, but now when you do like, I mean, uh, in Azure specifically, where you can trust a, a service principle and have the authentication validation from that service principle be offloaded to a separate provider entirely. So like you can trust a GitHub action. Um, and, and that's not known by the ad global admin, by the way, a developer can enable that. So, so we've, we've done talks on that previously, how we pivoted through GitHub to then take over an Azure tenant. Um, so it's, We've learned a lot of good things, but there are more things to consider. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I do want to uh, also briefly touch on uh, some kind of new and exciting stuff that we just released uh, earlier this year. And honestly, we'll probably continue to push out uh, research here for the next three to six months. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Active Directory Certificate Services and the very... Very interesting research uh, that was put out by Will Schroeder and Lee Christensen 
some time ago. Um, we have support that support for that now in active or in Bloodhound Enterprise. Uh, so we can identify all, uh, those escalations um, that were pretty damning. I mean, uh, when Lee and Will were looking at these escalations. Uh, <clears throat> when they were before they wrote the full white paper, they were they were trying to determine like how widespread is this issue. They found out that like nine out of ten environments that that we just reached out as customers, like, hey, can we see if this is in your environment? Nine out of ten of them had it. It was really really bad. Like we're talking about that domain users to domain admin and one step type of finding. It must have so, been some good catastrophe giggling around the office once they started to figure out how well, quite how prevalent this was and how bad it was going to be. It, yeah, it, you know, it started out as uh, maybe we can make a blog post on this. And then they just kept digging and kept finding stuff. And then 143 pages later, you know, it's, it's, it, and that wasn't, that wasn't complete. You know, they've, had, they've updated it over the years. So there's a lot here. There's so much complexity. I mean, to the point of like, you know, we talked about how hard it is to understand the configurations of Active Directory. I truly believe that ADCS is something that people set up once and try to burn out of their memory and forget. You know, there, <laughs> there'd just be so many dragons here. So um, as an example, uh, here's the uh, the escalation one attack um, that domain users, you know, can basically one step their way to domain admin. Um, so this is more or less the same kind of workflow, right? We can see the configurations, but in the, in the case of ADCS ESC1 and a couple other um, attacks that we model, uh, this, is, this is comprising a set of multiple configurations in one edge. So we're representing it as one ADCS ESC1 edge, but that actually uh, is comprising multiple configurations. And this is a new functionality that we introduced uh, is what like alongside ADCS coverage is the ability to see the composition for the attack. So I can see, you know, with ADCS ESC1, I can see all the steps that I would need to take to abuse it. I can also understand all the specific links and, and this all needs to exist for ADCS ESC1 to be abusable. So we can see the domain users has enroll rights over this uh, certificate template. Uh, they also have enroll rights through authenticated users over the CA, which chains up to the root CA. It's also trusted for NT auth. Um, and, and the good the good news here is while this is so uh, um, uh, advantageous for ad adversaries, right? They can they can use this like um, this escalation with pretty damning effects. The good news is from the, the remediation side, you have multiple ways that you can fix this. So each link that you should, saw there can be addressed. So um, that gives flexibility to the organization. So again, like our very verbose re remediation documentation, you can kind of choose your own adventure on which way you'd like to proceed that would have the least or zero impact on your environment. I mean, it could literally be these, as simple as making manager approval on that. On, you know, like on, on that component. And then that, that entire, um, attack goes away. Yeah. So that is ADCS ESC one. Um, here you can just see that we have a couple more environments in our, uh, our test lab, some with some more interesting la uh, naming, but, but this is kind Dumpster of dot fire 96%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see that, you know, what we're trying to demonstrate here is that you can kind of Again, assess your global footprint. We have customers with over a hundred domains, and they're managing them all through here. Um, so, regardless of size, uh, regardless of complexity, we can kind of cut through it and pinpoint you on what you need to focus on. All right. I mean, I think that that's probably a good place to end it. Have we missed anything? Um, I don't think so. Um, if you're ever interested in understanding how we would help, I mean, reach out. We will give demos and understand more about your environment. I'd say the best way you can see it is just deploying it on your side and, and let it speak for itself. Yeah. So what's the what's that process? Is there like a free trial version? Oh, yeah. Or is it contact sales? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, people it, might be curious it is that. contact sales, but it, it goes into a, uh, you get routed immediately to like a conversation about your environment. And, and then we we just talk through the POC process. I mean, I'd, I'd say 90, like, uh, it used to be, you know, it used to be 90 plus percent of, of all our sales were done through POC. So it's very standard for us. Um, yeah, it's a it, it can be as fast as two weeks. So super, super quick. Uh, and yeah. then so yeah, sense. 
TL, TLDR, if you if you want to know more, reach out. You can get up and running yeah. with this pretty quick and pretty Absolutely. easy. And then there's it, nothing like seeing it in your own environment with your own data and your own groups and your own yeah. impact to really convince people why this stuff matters. Because like, you know, looking at, at a dumpster dot fire, of course that's terrible. But <laughs> when it's your own domain, like that really makes it makes it impactful. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I, I'm au fait with your pricing and, uh, you know, it's priced well. Like, it, it, it's, to me, it's priced at the no-brainer level considering the, you know, the impact that just even a, even a one-time exercise of going through it and clearing up the worst, um, it's worth doing. Right? And, and for, for the level of complexity that understanding this stuff, I mean, looking at that documentation that guides you through it, the amount of knowledge you have to have to write that documentation and build a plan about how you're going to deal with any one of these issues, like that is worth the price of admission right there. I mean, there's no yeah. better resource for AD or ADCS documentation on the planet, I suspect. What, okay, uh, well, Adam and I are going to stop having our fanboy moment uh, for, <laughs> <laughs> for Bloodhound right now. But uh, Justin, thanks a lot for taking the time to walk us through that. Uh, I'm guessing there's, you know, uh, a bunch of people who've, who've watched this who are going to say, oh, okay, right, like I, I actually get what this is now and I get, I get how it can help. So, um, yeah, good stuff. And uh, we'll be talking to you on the podcast throughout the year. Uh, but thanks again for joining us for that demo. It was very interesting. Awesome. Thank you.